So now we'll turn uh, to some panel discussion, some questions. And Ryan, why don't I start with you on that statewide production adjustment? Is that fixed or is that varied? And where can people go to see that information? Uh, yeah, that's a good question, Shannon. That's uh, from my best understanding, that's going to be that's going to vary, right, based on specific factors that happen within your state, right? So, it, so it's going to it's going to adjust for some of those changes. Um, the best way to to look at that, RMA does a really nice job putting out information on this. Uh, so, RMA and I'd visit with your your insurance agent if you can find one that's that's selling dairy revenue protection. So, it'd have to be a certified crop insurance agent. But they are, they're going to be the ones that you would discuss and analyze, and, and they would be able to look at that historically and understand that production adjustment and, and how, it, how it relates to your individual operation. Very good. How about uh, for both the dairy margin coverage and dairy revenue protection, when are the premiums due? Are they due at, uh, when you sign up or... Are the premiums paid at the end of the endorsement, not of the indemnity? Ooh, that's a – let me – Russ, do you know the, off the top of your head on the – At the end of the endorsement, uh, or at the end of the, the period, you know, uh, that's when they would come to. So that there's – I. I don't believe there's any upfront cash on it, yeah. But I, I'm not entirely sure on that uh, with the dairy margin coverage either. I'm I'm pretty sure that with the DRP, but as as with all the other insurance products, yeah. Uh, Russ, Ryan, I'm I'm pretty sure with the DMC, it's uh, it's uh, it's at the end. Yeah, that's what that's what I would I believe. Yeah. And, and so, Russ, how would you compare the dairy margin coverage to those producers in the upper Midwest versus uh, some of our producers in the West? Yeah, it's, I think that's a great question, Shannon, in the sense that, you know, like I mentioned, the 5 million pounds is probably, you know, maybe a couple hundred cows. So if you are in Wisconsin, you know, where the – average herd size is is less than that you're you're getting a relatively larger percentage in relation to your production but at the same time uh you're still able to take advantage of the same dollar amount in terms of up to that 5 million pounds in tier 1 and and benefit you know on the same dollar basis per dairy but you're right i mean in terms of it's it's not like a a payment based upon production like a lot of the commodity programs I guess would be uh, you know in terms of you get there's a, a production factor in there where here it's you get the production factor just up to the five million pounds and then then it, you're off in tier two which is you know ten times as expensive yeah yeah very good so uh, maybe Hernan, if you, uh, there's a question on exports outlook for, and where do you see exports uh, uh, of milk impacting price and in turn these programs? Yeah. So um, uh, exports of, of dry whey have been increasing back to China. They they do that for their uh, swine, the pigs. And so that that's been increasing, and and also our cheese products have been able to to uh, go in increase their their penetration in in Asia Pacific markets. So um, those are two markets that that are in crescendo in this period. Mexico with the uh, U.S. Uh, MCA, uh, you know, we anticipated more dairy going in there. Um, I believe cheese will 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 get back to the previous uh, uh, stages before tariffs were put in place, but um, but it's still very slim compared to to, to skim milk, which uh, is the biggest one. And 
that has not been as much. We haven't exported as much as we used to uh, year over year, but uh, I, I I anticipate uh, getting things back to normal in that market, and it, that's our biggest market, and so uh, things getting increasing there too. So th- th- that's that's what I can say about exports. Thank you, Hernan. And, and then extending that uh, to the dairy margin coverage, Russ. What what's your outlook on the feed cost uh, formula as part of that dairy margin coverage and where, where do you think that, how might that impact uh, utilization of, of dairy margin coverage? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, um, you know, the forecast from a Farm Service Agency when they're showing that, uh, you know, margin under the 950 there in the you know, for a good chunk of next year. I think that's what's built into that is, you know, higher higher feed costs, especially on the on the soybean and, and and corn side, you know, and you know, even on you know, on the alfalfa a little bit to a certain extent, you know, we've seen fairly strong sides. So I mean it, it is I think uh as much the the feed cost that's driving that margin down as more than than the the demand side on the forecast, yeah. So definitely, I mean, I I think yeah, it's another reason to to have some some form of coverage in this kind of a market environment. Yeah, and and when, how how much time do producers have yet left to sign up for dairy margin coverage? Because you presented some information where I think what was it close to a little over twenty percent. Uh, right now, uh, in the enrollment period. Right. Yeah. So I should have emphasized that. I was, I was thinking everybody would have that on their mind, being watching this. But yeah, I mean, December 11th is is the the last date uh, for sign up, as I understand. So, and that's something that you have to go down and do uh, sign up. It's not like you just uh, if you signed up last year, it's going to roll you over. No, you have you have to sign up. So. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of time, but I mean, I guess you know some people may be waiting till the end to kind of get a better judge on what the market's going to be. But I would say the time is here to uh, to uh, sign up uh, if, if if you have any inclination at all of doing so. Yeah. And uh, so so Russ, uh, you sign up for the dairy margin coverage uh, where? Who do you I contact sure. to initiate yeah, that? so your local farm service agency is where you would sign up. You sign up for the the dairy margin coverage, yeah. Which would be and, different. And Ryan, from, for the dairy yeah. revenue protection, how how would a producer initiate action to get more information or uh, pursue developing a policy? So they'd have to buy dairy revenue protection through an authorized crop insurance agent. So, um, you know, if they don't have, if they don't currently have one that they're working with, uh, RMA has a has a little tool where you can find the agent locator. Um, but uh, most of these areas that have dairy, there's going to be a crop insurance agent, but they got to buy one through a uh, authorized crop insurance agent. Yeah. And do you know on on the dairy revenue protection, you're you're enrolling for a quarter. Does it pay on a month, or does it, or do you get the average outcome of the quarter? Do you get the payout of it? Say that one more time, Shannon. So on the on the on the dairy revenue protection, you're signing up uh, an endorsement for a quarter, but do the triggers occur monthly, or are they averaged over the quarter? Uh, I believe they're averaged over the quarter. Okay. Um, Because, yeah, because those actual ending milker component, they're based on those monthly average prices. Okay. Very good. And, and Hernan, you're you're in the southern Idaho area, real real heavy milk production area. has there been any new processing plants come online uh, to deal with the expanding production? 
Yeah, so there, um, there, there was a, 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 a production line come, that was supposed to come in. It was a, a ultra-high filtered milk uh, processor, but uh, given the pandemic, uh, construction of it uh, has been delayed. Um, there was a, a processor of uh, proteins and, and stuff uh, that uh, expanded their uh, capacity uh, last year, so pre-pandemic. So, uh, yeah, down here in the south of Idaho, we, uh, we have a lot, uh, over 350,000 cows. We're uh, always wanting more capacity, but at this time it's been put on hold, uh, that, that new project. Okay, thank you. And then, and then as a as a closing question, maybe uh, some comments on the uh, CFAP program relative to dairy, and uh, is there any outlook for that into 2021? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's not clear at this point. Uh, the the producers have been favored well with that, and uh, uh, it has been, as I mentioned, I think. Uh, uh, been reflected in in their in their uh, in their revenues uh, of of producers, so um, it it has has made a good uh, impact on them. But uh, this, at the same time, has has uh, has uh, has uh, resulted in in a, in a lot of uh, milk still being produced, as as I showed in the slide. So. I'm not sure there will be a new program rolling out, um, though I could be wrong, but uh, uh, we'll see what, what happens uh, uh, with the new policies coming in. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think the food box program, you know, it kind of definitely helped push the prices up, ap you know, after the – the low there in the pandemic and you know that but that's another added risk I, I would view that in terms of going forward just because the policy could come and go just as quickly yeah yes Russ is, is right on yep yeah. well well very good well I think it's clear that each of the presenters really articulated well the risk facing dairy producers in milk price and in feed cost, export trends, and, and now even COVID outlook as we move forward. So uh, again, uh, we urge you to take proactive risk management, uh, partner up the dairy margin coverage up to that tier one at least, uh, given its uh, high subsidy level and then investigate the dairy revenue protection if that fits into your farm's production plan. So thanks again to our three speakers today, Dr. Ryan Larson, Dr. Russell Tronstad, and Dr. Hernan Tijita, uh, all uh, here in the West, all uh, looking, all gave you their contact information if you want to search them out and ask them further questions. So thank you for that, for, for those three. And thank you for taking the time today to be on this webinar. Right, we have future Ag and Uncertain Times webinars on food distribution systems in December and January. So take to stay tuned for information releases on the availability of those programs. And what, what area or topic that you would like to see offered in the future, either send us an entry in the chat pod or please send an inf email information to information at farmmanagement.org and we'll uh, investigate and try to make that happen in future webinars. As mentioned earlier, the recordings and other information are available at the Ag and Uncertain Times website which we will provide additional instructions on how to access in just a minute. If you're interested in a copy of any of today's presentation slides, they are also available for download. Let me close by again extending our thanks to today's speakers for their first class presentations on dairy risk management 
and thanks to our Ag and Uncertain Times team and their sponsoring institutions for making this series possible.